was introduced is a funny word, uh, Professor Parimala, uh, whom I have known all my life at the Tata Institute. It's very nice to welcome her back to uh, the AFR and to speak about uh, as a principle for simply connected groups. She's from Emory University, Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Professor Parimala. Uh, hello. Uh, so maybe I'll share the screen. Is it uh, good, the screen sharing? Yeah. It looks okay. fine to me. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so indeed, I'm very, very happy and honored to be uh, speaking at this uh, very special meeting in honor of uh, or to celebrate the 80th birthday of Raghunathan. As Venki says, um, my association also with Raghunathan goes back a long, long time. Uh, maybe the very first, first beginning was when I was a graduate student taking his analysis course. <laughs> and uh, somehow I felt as if I was listening to an algebra course. <laughs> So, <laughs> so thank you, Raghunathan, and uh, happy birthday. Okay, so the main uh, theme of the, uh, my talk is to just uh, highlight the significance of the role of simply connected groups in the context of Hase principle for number fields and later on function fields. Okay, so what is Hase principle? This has been mentioned already in several talks before. K is a number field. Omega K, the set of all places of K. And for, for a place, we denote by KV, the completion of K at V. And um, so what is Hase principle? One looks for, given a variety over the number field, one looks for uh, rational points of this variety over K. So whether it admits a rational point and Further on, there are questions about how many rational points, density, et cetera, et cetera. One way first to approach this question is to look at whether it has a rational point or the completions. Uh, one has a slightly better handle at um, attacking this question because the completion is Hensilian and there are better ways to handle the existence of rational points for a variety. Okay, so uh, to state uh, precisely this question, suppose F is a family of varieties or a field or a number field, we say that the family satisfies Hasse principle. If for every uh, variety in this family, if uh, it admits local points at KV for all V in omega, local rational points, then it admits the K rational point. Then we say that this family satisfies Hasse principle. Of course, when you talk of Hasse principle, the first thing which comes to our mind is the classical hasse minkowski theorem. So it says that a family of uh, uh, quadrics over K satisfies Hasse principle. That is equivalently a quadratic form or Q over uh, a number field K represents zero non-trivially uh, over KV for all completions V of uh, K, then it represents zero non-trivially over K. Okay, so quadrics, are more special than a general class of varieties. It is uh, homogeneous under, uh, under the orthogonal group. So, um, so one may look at the most special families of uh, homogeneous cases under uh, connected linear algebraic groups. So there is a extensive study of Hasse principle for homogeneous spaces under connected linear algebraic groups over number of fields in, the, um, in several decades, last few decades. And uh, of course, I want to just say that uh, Hasse pr principle in general could fail even for principal homogeneous spaces under connected linear algebraic groups. The typical example, which is in a, is an exercise in uh, say, say uh, in uh, Castles and Prolish, the expose of Tate, I think, you take the normic torus namely the normon elements in the, in the extension L over Q, where L is the bi-quadratic extension, Q root, three root, uh, root 13, root 17. And you take the space X, variety defined by norm equal to 25. This uh, is uh, the normic torus acts on this. It's a principal homogeneous space under T. 
And uh, this principal homogeneous space admits a local point at all completions, simply because the, the bi-quadratic extension you have taken locally has degree two. And we are looking at 25, which is a square, which is always a norm from a quadratic extension. However, it, it is a job to prove that the exercise that this does not have a Q point. So in general, the principle may fail even for principal homogeneous spaces. However, it was Knezer who brought into focus the context of simply connected groups over number fields while discussing Hase principle. I really want to highlight this point. Uh, he was the first person, I, I mean, I had some discussion with Sarah on this topic and he says, because uh, he was handling, uh, so he was analyzing the spinner uh, genus so closely or number fields that he came to the conclusion of the following conjecture, which I'll mention next. Uh, I don't know, Knezer's conjecture is missing from the slides. So, so, so he proposed a conjecture in the uh, in 1960s in the ICM plenary talk. He proposed the following con conjecture that uh, Hase principle holds for semi simple simply connected groups uh, defined over a number field. Okay, that is a principal Hase principle holds means given a principal homogeneous space and a semi-simple simply connected linear algebraic group. If it, if it admits a local point, then it has a point over the number field. So some examples of uh, simply connected uh, uh, groups, for instance, SLN, which we all are familiar with, and the symplectic group, the spinner group, and basically this exa exhausts the list of all classical groups, split classical groups. And of course, we have a list of uh, very interesting exceptional groups of type G2, F4, E6, E7, and E8. These are all the, um, the list for split groups. And uh, of course, uh, there are, um, or given a, we are looking at a number field. So for a general field, there are non-split forms of these groups. And uh, this was already mentioned uh, in a previous talk. So if D is a finite, one example, if D is a finite dimensional central division algebra or, or, or a field, SLD is the group of reduced norm one elements in D. Then it is a semi-simple simply connected group defined over K. And uh, it, is, uh, it fits into an exact sequence, S1 to SLD to GLD, which is the group of units of D. And the map to GM, the unit, units so of the base field is the reduced norm map. So this exact sequence of uh, algebraic groups, it yields by the connecting map, uh, an isomorphism of K star modulo reduced norm D star with the Galois cohomology set H1K SLD. And the right-hand side is the set which classifies isomorphism classes of principal homogeneous spaces under SLD. Okay, so any kind of Hasse principle for SLD because of this isomorphism reduces to a Hasse principle for reduced norms, namely local reduced norms are reduced norms. And in fact, this is a theorem which goes back before Knezer. Hase, Hase mass Schilling, they prove that if K is a number field and D is a central division algebra over K and lambda is a central element, it is a reduced norm from KV for all completions, implies it is a reduced norm from D. And in fact, the condition that it is a local reduced norm is simply at, uh, at real places because or finite places we know that reduced norm is subjective. Every element is a reduced norm. And therefore, this condition is precisely for real places. Thus, ah, okay, the conjecture appears here. So Knezer made this conjecture in the 60, 1960 plenary talk. K is a number field. G is a semi-simple, simply connected linear algebraic group defined over K. Then Hasse principle holds for principal homogeneous spaces under G. And once again, as in the case of reduced norms, if KV is a periodic field, then Knezer proves that uh, this H1 KG is trivial or a periodic, this should be a KV or a periodic field, this the principal homogeneous spaces are trivial. And hence, uh, when G is semi-simple, simply connected, 
and therefore the above condition once again reduces to uh, uh, real places. In particular, if k is a totally imaginary number field, then every principal homogeneous space under G is trivial. Okay, so Knazer made this conjecture after verifying this conjecture for classical simply connected groups. The above conjecture is now a theorem. For uh, uh, it is due to harder for other exceptional groups than EH, and uh, you should see the time scale. And it almost took another twenty years to complete the conjecture for the case of E8, and this result is due to Chernusov. Okay, so surprisingly, uh, surprising, or oh, maybe even before uh, going to more general cases, I want to say that uh, I'm just focusing on simply connected groups. There's a whole lot of uh, literature on uh, uh, going forward with looking at Hase principle for more general uh, reductive or even connected linear algebraic groups, finding obstructions like uh, the brauer manin and proving finiteness theorems and so on. For many of these results, this uh, basic Knazer's uh, conjecture, which is a theorem, is basic to most of these uh, further results. Okay, so in the 60s, even before Knazer's conjecture was fully resolved, Sayer proposed the following far-reaching uh, generalization of this conjecture, which is now referred to as conjecture two. If K is a perfect field of cohomological dimension at most two, and G is a semi-simple simply connected linear algebraic group over K, then H1 KG is trivial. That is every principal homogeneous space under G over K is trivial. So the cohomological dimension two condition, it simply says that uh, uh, you take the, the mth Galois cohomology of F with values in a finite torsion Galois module, it shall vanish for all M bigger than or equal to N plus one. Then you say that the cohomological dimension is bounded by N. Okay, so this conjecture, even before the Knazer, Knazer conjecture was resolved in full generality. And so uh, maybe a sample examples of cohomological dimension less than or equal to two fields, uh, totally imaginary number fields are uh, cohomological dimension two fields. And uh, Sayer's conjecture re here reduces to Knazer's conjecture. And some geometric examples of cohomological dimension two fields, these are function fields of surfaces or algebraically closed fields. Okay, so the first non-trivial case of conjecture two, namely is for uh, GSLD was settled by, when I write SLD, you can as well put SLND for uh, normal elements in MN of D. It was settled by Mercury Suslin. And this is, uh, they prove that uh, H1K SLD is trivial if K is a, perfect field of cohomological dimension less than or equal to two. That in other words, by the previous description of this set, the reduced norm is subjective. In fact, they prove something stronger and um, this is a, a consequence of what they prove. Uh, and the conjecture for all classical groups were settled by Eva Bayar and myself. And the validity of the conjecture for G2 and F4 was already remarked by Say where it, it holds. And uh, it, the, the conjecture even today is open in general for uh, the exceptional groups of type trilitarian D4, E6, E7, and E8. And uh, of course, there are many special cases. I mentioned, for instance, the case of function fields of surfaces or algebraically closed fields. In all these cases, the conjecture is fully settled. Okay, so in this context, I want to bring in the, the one invariant associated to principal homogeneous spaces and the simply connected groups, which is, uh, which is which was uh, proposed by Sayer and the, the construction was due to Rost. So called, we refer to it as the Rost invariant. This is a cohomological dimension uh, invariant, which takes values in the third Galois cohomology with torsion coefficients, Q mod Z2. The vanishing of this invariant certainly is uh, there's this invariant certainly vanishes for cohomological dimension two fields because this lives in h3 okay so this uh, so this invariant rg from h1 kg to h2 it goes to h3 h3 k q mod z2 this is the primary obstruction to the vanishing of tosses and the simply connected groups and this invariant has a simple description and for sld and it goes back to suslin 
So let me say what the invariant for, uh, for SLB. You take H1K SLB, any element is given by a class of K star modulo reduced norms. This class lambda goes to the following element in H3. Lambda defines the nth square class on which gives an element in H1, K mu n by Kummer. And the class B defines an element in uh, n torsion of the Brouwer group of K, which is in H2, K mu n. And you take the cup product that lives in H3, K mu n tensor 2. This is the invariant for SLB. So we'll just come back to the, uh, and in fact, Mercury and Suslin, they prove, prove that this, this invariant in some sense has trivial corners. This is very, very important that a uh, uh, principal homogeneous space is completely characterized by its Rost invariant, provided the, the degree the degree of the index of D is square free. Square free index algebras, the Rost invariant completely determines the torsor. So this is very important, which will come into discussion in subsequent slides. Of course, if D is not square free, the injectivity no longer holds. Okay, so moving beyond number fields, <clears throat> for function fields of curves over uh, uh, PRD or number fields, there are, uh, there are conjectures analogous to Knazer conjecture that have been posed uh, about Hasse principle for tosses and the semi-simple simply connected groups. We shall now discuss these conjectures and some progress towards these conjectures. Okay, first number field, K is a totally imaginary number field. X uh, over K is smooth, projective, geometrically integrated curve, and F is the function field. FB is just you take the completion of K at V and take the function field of the variety X over KV. This denotes FV. It is the KV function field X for each place V in omega. So the following uh, was proposed by, conjecture was proposed by Kolyotelin. So you take a G, a semi-simple, simply connected linear algebraic group defined over F, then, the Hasse kernel, that is the kernel of H1 FG to product H1 FBG, V in omega has trivial kernel. Here K need not be totally imaginary. You can take K to be any number field and you take the set of all places. So this Hasse kernel is trivial, is the conjecture. In other words, uh, Hasse principle holds for rational points on tosses and uh, semi-simple simply connected groups or F with respect to this bunch of overfields FB. Okay, so let us look at this uh, this uh, conjecture in the in the case of uh, central division algebras or uh, F. Suppose the index is n, then we know what is H1 F SLD purely algebraically. It is just F star mod reduced norms. And so the Hasse principle once again is uh, whether local reduced norms or reduced norms. You have this Hasse map to H1 F V. And you have this Rost invariant, which goes to H3 F mu and tensor two, which we have explicitly described. And you have the local Rost invariance, uh, the local Rost invariance on the right hand side. And you have the local to global map from H3F to H3FV on the Galois cohomology. And uh, so the nicest part here is that the, this arithmetic result of Cato, which says that the map on the cohomology H3F to H3FV is injective. Okay, there's no kernel at the H3 level. And, uh, and Suppose you put in the condition that n is square free, then you get it for free that by going to this diagram, going to the Rost maps and looking at the local global, we conclude immediately putting together Cato and Mercury Suslin results that Coliothelian conjecture, namely Hasse principle, holds in this specific case of SLD with D square free index. So we have the following progress on the above conjecture. Suppose K is a number field, and this is a, a theorem of Philip Gilles. So he completely settles the conjecture in the case when the curve is just a, a, the, a, the projective line. So G is a semi-simple, simply connected linear algebraic group defined over the number field. Then H1 of the rational function field KTG to H1 KVTG, the local one, has trivial corner. So this is, um, uh, this is the first known result in this roughly in the general case. And, um, and of course, uh, this is uh, using Bruhatitz and completely classification free. And uh, 
there is there is this result of Preeti and myself. It goes back to Preeti's uh, thesis time. If K is a number field and G is a semi-simple, simply connected linear algebraic group of classical type, here it uses classification over the number field. And X is a smooth projective geometrically integrated curve over K. Then the Hasse kernel is trivial. H1 KX to K KVX G is trivial. Uh, essentially, we prove the result for all uh, classical groups. Of course, G is defined over the base field K. And I don't know whether there are further results in this direction. And uh, so this is all, uh, all the progress so far as I know about this question of polyethylene. Of course, more general questions are for G, not just defined over K, but defined over the function field, then it gets more intricate. Okay, so now we move on to function fields over periodic curves. Here, uh, K is a period, instead of number field, you go to a periodic field and X is a smooth trajectory geometrically integrated curve over K. And you have that is a, now, I mean, when we talk of Hasse principle, you have to talk of what are the uh, local completions we are looking at. We look at omega F, which is the so-called divisorial discrete valuations of F. This was already mentioned in Egov's lecture. So this is the set of all discrete valuations of F, which are centered on uh, a various a smooth uh, projective models of X over the uh, over the periodic integers. You take various uh, regular proper models, not smooth models, sorry, smooth, it's not smooth, but regular proper models of the curve. And you look at co-dimension one points of these curves and look at all the discrete valuations associated to these co-dimension one points on various regular models. So this is the so-called divisorial discrete valuations. And we fix this omega f when we discuss um, uh, Hasse principle. One can of course take all discrete valuations, but it is uh, this is more of a geometric nature. So the questions on Hasse principle for homogeneous spaces under connected linear algebraic groups, this has gained uh, some momentum in the last decade with several new conjectures posed in the context and new results coming forth. Also because of certain new techniques arriving on the scene, which I'll explain in the next few slides. Okay, the conjecture first. So after some experiments, Koliothelene, Suresh and myself, we arrived at the following conjecture that uh, the same as Mazer conjecture, except now F is uh, the function field of a curve or a, uh, a curve or a periodic field. K is a periodic field. X over K is a smooth projective to integrate curve over K and F is a function field. G is semi-simple, simply connected linear algebraic group over F. Then Hasse principle holds for torsors under G over F with respect to the divisorial discrete valuations omega F. Well, we post this conjecture after verifying it in several cases, including when G is a quasi-split group. And, and mark it that we propose this conjecture when K is a periodic field. I just want to quickly mention that you can also pose similar conjectures when K is a complete discrete value field with arbitrary residue field instead of a periodic field whose residue fields, fields are finite. However, this conjecture uh, uh, fails in general. And I'll come back to this point towards the end of my talk. So it's just a warning that the conjecture was only for periodic fields more of arithmetic nature. And uh, so what is the progress on this conjecture? So Preeti and uh, Hu, they proved conjecture uh, for all groups of type BN, CN, and BN. And in fact, Preeti proves that the Rost invariant from H1 FG to H3 F mu and tensor two has trivial kernel in these cases, BN, C, and BN, okay? And she arrives at the conjecture after this and in together with Carto's theorem. And the case of SLD, where D is square free index, once again, we have Carto's theorem as well as injectivity of the Rost invariant. So you would get the same if D is square free index for SLD, that conjecture is true. So these are the cases which were proved some time ago. And uh, uh, there are two cases which were, uh, uh, which were left open in the above discussion. Namely, the general case of SL, SLND, where it is type A and 1, okay? So the inner type A and that is, so D is a central division algebra over K. And the second is the outer type A and, which is the special unitary group of Hermitian forms over uh, 
division algebras with unitary involutions. These cases uh, remained open for a while. And however, we are slightly in a better state now. So we have um, the following theorem of uh, Preeti, Suresh, and myself. The conjecture holds for type A and one, if P is co-prime to, there's always this good characteristic assumption in the solution of all these conjectures. So P is co-prime to N plus one. Note that P is, uh, what P stands for is that we are the base field K is the periodic P. That is the, P, the residue field characteristic is co-prime to N plus one. Then uh, conjecture A, a conjecture holds for groups of inner type A, A N. Once again, repeating the uh, uh, this particular case, it is equivalent to Hasse principle for reduced norms for algebras of index co prime to P. Okay. And uh, so uh, the next uh, unitary case, still it was open for a couple of years, and this is also settled, thereby settling the conjecture for all list of all classical groups. Conjecture A holds for groups of type A and 2, that is outer type A n. That is the case of unitary case, where if P is co-prime to twice n plus 1. All these uh, co-prime characteristics uh, uh, we assume in order a so-called good characteristic case. And it doesn't mean, um, I mean, probably it's also true in the bad characteristic case, but it needs further work. OK, so, so what brought about this? Uh, the solution in the, the case of AN1, AN2. Here we have, uh, uh, in fact, some we needed some new techniques to develop a proof of these results. And uh, so I'll just mention uh, the, the techniques we use in the proof of uh, the conjecture in AN1, in AN2 cases. So these are the so-called patching techniques, which have been uh, very, very well used and uh, in, in so much work concerning uh, things to do with linear algebraic groups or function fields of curves or general complete discrete value fields, okay? So this, these techniques were developed by Harbeter, Hartman, Krashen in the setting of function fields in one variables or complete discrete value fields. And this is what we use uh, as a key technique in order to arrive at the proof for the, for the last remaining two cases. <clears throat> so this, uh, this will be explained in more detail in uh, Kolyothalin's talk tomorrow. And I also want to mention, I mean, uh, mention that uh, the more general question I was, um, my, uh, the more que general question, namely, if the base field K is not a periodic field, but a general uh, complete discrete value field, the question whether semi-simple simply connected groups, whether the tosses under these groups uh, um, satisfy Hasse principle, this still was open a little bit of time since all these uh, positive results were proved for function fields of periodic curves. It still remained over, can it go further down and whether it could be true for more general fields than just function fields of periodic curves, namely function fields of curves or complete discrete value fields. And, and finally, uh, there are examples arrived at even for the case of SLD where it fails for a more general field so this will be uh, explained in Kolyothalin's uh, lecture. So indeed conjecture A, A is uh, indeed generally for fields of arithmetic type. And also there is a whole bunch of results which I didn't mention uh, uh, cover the case of projective homogeneous spaces. Namely, even for number fields, following Knazer's conjecture, harder proves that uh, for projective homogeneous spaces and uh, semi-simple simply connected groups, it doesn't matter even if you can take a connected linear algebraic group, there is Hasse principle. Of course, the key, key thing is to have the Hasse principle for simply connected groups for principal homogeneous spaces, and then you develop how you are going to prove it for projective homogeneous spaces. And in fact, you have similar results for classical groups for projective homogeneous spaces as well. Since I didn't mention it in the beginning, I'll just Maybe my time is getting uh, getting over. So I want to say thank you and I conclude at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much. And are there any questions or uh, uh, remarks from uh, the audience? Does anybody want to ask any questions?
right uh, thank you so much uh, professor parimala then uh, we shall meet again at uh, 10 past 7 thank you